Good evening, Bahamas. Coming up tonight, former PLP MP Frank Smith granted bail in the Supreme Court. The FNM chairman speaks out on allegations of a political witch hunt. The health minister gives an update on that campaign promise to repeal VAT on health care. Four weeks in and the Royal Bahamas Police Force showcased their skills in their annual summer camp. Our news is brought to you by Alive, the nation's newest and best LTE network. Good to be alive. To our news and thanks for joining us. I'm Kyle Joaquin. Topping news tonight, former PLP MP and chairman of the Public Hospitals Authority, Frank Smith, has been granted bail. This after quick action by his lawyers who went to the Supreme Court for a bail hearing immediately after the former senator was charged in the magistrate's court. Mr. Smith has been admitted to bail in the amount of $50,000 and that's the only condition. Smith was granted $50,000 bail with two shorties less than two hours after he was arraigned in the magistrate's court on 13 counts of extortion, one count of attempted extortion, and a single count of bribery. Justice Stephen Isaacs heard Smith's bail application in the Supreme Court. Only our news team was there as Smith's attorney, Damian Gomez, left the Supreme Court smiling. We just took the position that it was unreasonable to ask for his travel documents given his circumstances. He's an exceptionally wealthy Bahamian with huge business interests in the country. And uh, on a summary matter, it's unthinkable that he would flee the jurisdiction. Smith was forced to endure a second night in police custody after he appeared for the arraignment yesterday, only to find out his files weren't ready. It is alleged that between April 1st, 2016 and May 31st, 2017, in his capacity as a public officer, Smith obtained the sum of $5,000 from Barbara Hanna, knowing that he was not lawfully authorized to obtain the same. It is also alleged that sometime during the month of April 2016, Smith, in his capacity as a public servant and without lawful authority or reasonable excuse, solicited the sum of $5,000 per month from Barbara Hanna on account of his assistance to her in procuring a contract with the Public Hospitals Authority. Prosecutor Anthony Delaney also pointed out that there are no witnesses listed. He said this was intentional because of a recent matter where a photo of one of the witnesses went viral. He said the prosecution is concerned about witness intimidation. When we spoke with his attorney yesterday, Gomez was concerned that there was an effort being made to keep Smith behind bars over the weekend. But now that he is home on bail, Gomez explained where the legal team goes from here. Well, uh, we have obtained the order that we were seeking. Um, what we now do is focus on the um, preparation for trial. I will request discovery of certain documents uh, and by the time of the status hearing those documents um, ought to have been supplied to me. If they haven't, the issue is then raised with the magistrate and she'll determine whether or not I'm entitled to the documents I've asked for. If I am, then she will give a time limit within which the documents that have been produced and set a uh, venue um, and time for trial. Smith had heavy support in court today from his family and friends, including his in-laws, Franklin Wilson and former Senate President Sharon Wilson, former PLP Chairman Raynard Rigby, former Cabinet Minister Keith Bell, and Bishop Neil Ellis. Smith does not have to turn over his passport to the court and is free to travel. He returns to court on August 18th for a status hearing and a determination for the location of his trial. Meanwhile, Free National Movement Chairman Sidney Cauley is denying accusations of a political witch hunt. George O'Bain reports. Free National Movement Chairman Sidney Cauley calls allegations of a political witch hunt disingenuous and says only those who have done something wrong have anything to fear. Cauley's comments come on the heels of National Security Minister Marvin Dames, who asserted that no one is above the law and called the idea of a political witch hunt absurd and ridiculous. According to Cauley, the Minister administration promised to provide a transparent government and to expose corruption wherever it is found. So for anyone who has been required to attend before the police to answer questions of, for whatever reason, to scream holy hell in public and to make wild and spurious accusation against this government uh, when they well know quite well, many of them lawyers know the system. They know how the system works. It's disingenuous. 
Ali also spoke out on accusations that having high-profile politicians paraded before the courts is an abuse of political power. So there isn't anything unusual. I think what is unusual and what those who are screaming bloody hell are concerned about is that now is one law and it's the same law for everybody. If you're wearing a coat suit or if you're in short pants and a, and a tank top, it doesn't matter. You are going to be treated equally under the law. And that's what our system says. Recently charged politician Frank Smith's lawyer, Damian Gomez, vowed to look into the abuse of political power, but according to Cauley as a lawyer, he will not sanction or condone any abuse of the system by anyone. Cauley did admit that he found it embarrassing that Smith was brought before the courts yesterday without proper documents, but said it's not an unusual problem. The file was not in order. Now that's that's sloppy work, and 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 and, and I I've, it has happened to me before, as a lawyer when I used to practice criminal law, and I don't like as a lawyer when it happens. Uh, a no citizen, in my view, should be brought before the court to be charged until the paperwork is in order. It's embarrassing to the to the citizen, and it's embarrassing to his family. And it is not a good show on the police in the preparation of its dockets. And so uh, I don't know what happened, but if what is reported has happened, I think the police need to get their house in order. Reporting for our news, I'm Georgie O'Bain. Well, a new activist group that bears a similar name to We March Bahamas has emerged and is threatening to protest against the Minutes administration. While well, co-founder of We March, Senator Bernard, Renard Henfield, is making it clear he has nothing to do with We March 2. Jasmine Brown reports. Henfield says while he has no issue with people exercising their right to march, he thinks the name of this particular group hits too close to home. That imitation is a form of artless flattery. You know, the person doesn't have the audacity to say who they are, nor do they have the originality to come up with their own movement. So they're trying to ride the wave of We March Bahamas, hoping it would draw some attention. And In a post on Facebook this morning, We March 2 announced plans to protest over a number of issues, including claims of an abuse of power by the government over the recent arrests of former high-profile politicians. The group also says it intends to march for the Freedom of Information Act, as well as free university education and the repeal of VAT on breadbasket items, all campaign promises by the FNM. Henfield, who was appointed a senator by Prime Minister Dr. Hubert Minnis, says he finds it suspicious that the group became active after PLP Chairman Bradley Roberts called on the PLP to rise up against the evil of the FNM. That's clearly someone acting in response to uh, Bradley Roberts' call to rise up. When contacted today, PLP Chairman Bradley Roberts denied any knowledge of the group, saying he had no idea who was behind it. Our news also reached out to organizers of We March 2 on Facebook, but got no response up to airtime. However, the group did post this on Facebook, accusing Henfield of crying to the press and being a puppet for the Prime Minister. The post insisted Henfield has no credibility and is a sellout politician that played on the anger of the Bahamian people. The group also claimed Henfield has no right in marching with them until he resigns from the Senate. Still, Henfield says he holds no ill will toward the organizers whom he says are capitalizing on We March Bahamas past success. So I'm not going to knock them. I have no issue with them using the name We March too. If they want to ride that wave and use a brand that I created um, for their personal game or their personal agenda, so be it. But as long as you, you do it responsibly, you know, I always believe in giving people a voice. Reporting for our news, I'm Jasmine Brown. Dozens of patients were wheeled out of the Rand Memorial Hospital in Freeport today after a kitchen fire. Photos and videos circulated this afternoon showing nurses escorting patients out into the parking lot. Health Minister Dr. Dwayne Sands confirmed there was a fire in the hospital's kitchen. The minister said so far two staff members suffered mild smoke inhalation. Sands could not speak to the extent of the damage at the hospital but said he along with other health officials were heading to Grand Bahama later this afternoon to get a first-hand look. He said the primary focus is keeping the patients and staff safe. Well, as another former PLP member of parliament was charged in the magistrate's court today, observers say the minister administration is sending a clear message about perceived corruption. However, it ought to be careful about the precedent that is being set. Christina McNeil has the details.
While the Minnis administration appears to be taking a hard-line approach to cracking down on alleged corruption in government, it must ensure that processes are put in place across the board, regardless of political affiliation. University of the Bahamas professor Dr. Ian Strawn making that point as a guest of Jerome Sawyer's On the Record, which aired Thursday night. While some have called the recent arrests and charges levied against former government ministers a witch hunt, Strawn says the Bahamian people expect that the anti-corruption crackdown will go beyond party lines. I just think this is an, uh, an historic opportunity for this government, if it's serious, to create mechanisms that will satisfy the public, that it is committed to eradicating as much as possible corruption from public life. And, and uh, you know, let's, and, and, and we expect that. Looking back at the campaign trail, Strawn says former Prime Minister Hubert Ingram was instrumental in securing the Free National Movement's election win. However, Strawn says Ingram's recent warning for the Minnis administration to remain humble and on guard doesn't fit in with its moves to weed out corruption. Hold on! You got us worked up. You convinced us people were you know, stealing. You don't want to introduce cookie jars to public discourse. Mm -hmm. Don't then tell me once I vote them out, it's <laughs> all good. No, it's not all good. They took taxpayers' money. And so again, they, you, you, can't, you can't do this and not follow through. And that's where the citizens need to say, no, 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 no. Follow through. Go all the way. Which, and if some of your own have to fall, well, so be it. Yeah, let be, be that as you it may. This is former chairman of the Public Hospitals Authority, Frank Smith, today headed to court facing 12 charges, including bribery and extortion. That, Strawn says, is sending a clear message to Bahamians from all walks of life. We need to send a strong message that there are consequences, and we need to create a culture that says, you know, this, there is no impunity. You don't get to do whatever you want and not face any consequences. And, 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 and that trickles down because I believe that violence in the streets has a direct connection to corruption in high places. So what now? Strawn says this is just the beginning of what he hopes will be improved transparency and steps toward campaign finance reform. Because we don't have transparency in terms of things like campaign finance financing, it is very possible for the criminal underworld right. to have very strong connections to the political world and fund campaigns mm -hmm. and own politicians because you don't know where the money is coming from. It could be coming from a drug dealer or someone who traffics in humans or who in money launders. You don't know. Right. You really don't know. Reporting for our news, I'm Christina McNeil. Still to come on our news, why government won't be repealing VAT on health care anytime soon. Plus, a special viewing held for Cleo Fasadoli. Stay with us.